Welcome to tonight's Five on Five. The guest is Rick Bennett, AARP Director of Government Relations. Thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure to be here. Looking forward to a date of Oregon uh, legislation beginning February 4th. What are some of the things AARP is looking at in that? Uh, first and foremost, we'll be concerned about uh, budget and adequate funding for services for seniors and people with disabilities. Also looking at continuation of the discussion related to health care reform. And uh, retirement security will certainly uh, be a concern as well. Over the years, that has been an issue, the budget, and then thus with senior care and those sorts of things. What are some of the things that uh, have maybe gone wrong over the years, you feel, and some of the things that maybe they can fix? Well, certainly in the past few years, uh, dealing with the economic downturn and, and a decrease in, in tax revenues, we've struggled to continue to provide these essential services for seniors and people with disabilities. The governor's budget that he released uh, last month uh, 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 provides uh, current funding levels for those programs, so we're starting from a much better point than we have in the past, uh, but there are still concerns uh, as to whether we'll be able to, uh, to maintain that funding. It seems this proposed budget is looking at more long-term care services. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, Oregon has a model long-term care system because of our emphasis on home and community-based services. That works well for individuals who want to stay in their homes. It also has worked well for taxpayers over the years because it's much more cost-efficient than institutional care. And we want to continue to protect that. Also balancing the budget they're looking at PERS, also known yes. as Public Employee Retirement System. Uh, what are your thoughts on how they're um, kind of, I don't want to say manipulating, but, but working with that. Well, first and foremost, we're concerned about, you know, there's been a lot of discussion about the proposed savings from PERS uh, that the governor is suggesting and, and whether, in fact, those changes will be constitutional or not, uh, whether there will be support from the legislature. If not, there will be a significant gap in the budget that will have to be filled in some fashion with revenue from another source or we'll be looking at uh, cuts in programs as we have in the past. All right, we'll have a few more questions for you, so stick around. More Five on Five right after the break. Welcome back to tonight's Five on Five. The guest is Rick Bennett, AARP Director of Government Relations. We've been talking about the upcoming start of the Oregon Legislature on February 4th and some of the things that you're looking at. So when it comes to the, the PERS long-term long -term care service, um, how does the AARP help in those situations if they feel there's something that's not right with the budget? How do you kind of stick up for the seniors, so to speak? Well, both uh, just representing AARP and our members, and we have over 500,000 members here in Oregon, but we also work in coalition with a number of other organizations who share similar concerns, and, and certainly that provides uh, more leverage in, in supporting or, or, if we have to, opposing legislation that's being considered. Well, another thing that's uh, on the last session was in discussion, senior property tax deferral program. Uh, just tell us your thoughts on the situation there. Well, I think it's important to remember that in 2011, uh, the legislature was dealing with the fact that the reserves of that program have been, had been depleted. And without some changes in it, the program would have just gone away and not been able to provide any kind of benefit uh, related to uh, property taxes for, uh, for senior citizens. So changes were made. Uh, one of them that re, uh, received a great deal of uh, uh, discussion was related to the prohibition of uh, uh, participating in the program if you had a reverse mortgage. And unfortunately, after the fact, we found that a great many people were affected by that change. The legislature in 2012 uh, deferred that uh, change for two years and have been looking uh, further at that. And hopefully in this upcoming session, uh, we'll be able to resolve that, that particular issue. I'm very hopeful of that anyway. So when you're talking about the reverse mortgage, those who had a reverse mortgage were able to participate. Yeah. Now they were trying to remove that. In the past, there was a simple requirement of you being 62 years old and having an income of about $39,000 or less. The 2011 uh, session changed, made a number of changes in the program, including the fact if you had a reverse mortgage, you couldn't participate in the deferral program. And unfortunately, uh, after the fact, we learned that many more people than had been suspected actually had reverse mortgages and were being denied uh, participation in the program, and some with really very devastating uh, impact. So, so like I say, we're continuing to look at that. The legislature is very concerned about it. I'm hopeful that we'll, we'll get a better, better solution this time around. Really quickly here, uh, just uh, tell people how they, if they have um, questions for AARP, looking to join, how they can get more information. Well, certainly our, our website, uh, aarp.org, that's the national website, and through that you can access our state website as well and to get information regarding the organization, how you might participate in advocacy, and uh, a lot of other information as well. All right, thank you so much, Rick, for stopping by. I right. appreciate it. Thank you. That's it for the 5 on 5. More news right after the break.